God bless you, family. King Jesus bless you. Guys, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for tuning in. So we're going to be talking about um, something very cool about on our day of being caught away, rapture. There's going to be something in the sky. What am I talking about? Something that I sensed this morning while I was um, on the treadmill. I, I was doing some reading and um, this thoughts come. And um, anyways, I want to share that. But before we get into that, guys, what are you thankful for today? I wanted to share a few things uh, just off the top of my head that I'm thankful for. So assurance, just knowing that that I'm saved. <clears throat> Before I was born again, I wasn't sure. I was hoping I'd get to heaven by my fingertips. And it is not a peaceful, fruitful, powerful way to live when we have that fear and doubt and worry and insecurity about our salvation. And God's word tells us that uh, in First John, I believe we, we write these, I write these things so that you may know of the, the faith uh, that you have in Christ Jesus, <clears throat> the assurance you have, uh, to paraphrase something to that sense and many other scriptures but basically you know that you know when you know you're changed when you have a different relationship with sin uh, it's such a great feeling i also think of uh just knowing jesus and being known of him right uh again before i was saved i didn't have a personal relationship with jesus wasn't reading scripture and um man it is just like it's just like hiking without a a map it's like navigating waters without a compass or, or other tools. It's just getting tossed about. Um, I also am thankful for you guys, <laughs> the brethren, the body of Christ, fellow believers. You guys are an oasis in the desert as we are in this uh, this wicked wasteland. So, um, yeah, Hebrews 10, 23, 25. Don't forsake the gathering of the brethren and more and more as you see the day approaching. Yeah, the Lord commands that because he knows we're going to need uh, each other. <clears throat> and like I mentioned in my video yesterday, boldness was a theme. And uh, I'm thankful for boldness. That Holy Spirit gives us boldness. Uh, when we're filled with that Spirit, we can be more bold for Jesus. And uh, let us be more and more uh, as we grow in our faith walk. <clears throat> All right, so two scriptures come to me as I consider there's going to be something I truly uh, sense that will be in the sky right before the rapture. And I believe there's a couple of scriptures that kind of, uh, one in particular that shows to this. And you know, uh, a parallel uh, passage as well, King Jesus telling us that um, lift up your lift up your heads, your redemption draws near. There's so many different angles and, and perhaps uh, numerous meanings to such to any scripture. But I, I sense with that one, could it be like, get off your, your devices, um, be more aware of the world. But also, there's going to be something to the heavens, the clouds. When Jesus was glorified and uh, ascending into glory back to the right hand of the Father, uh, was it the two men in white, probably angels? Maybe it's explicit as angels. They're saying, hey, men of Jerusalem, why do you sit there and look up like that? He who ascended shall return in like manner. That's why I love driving truck because I'm looking. Uh, there's going to be an event. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that here. Uh, so before I break into that scripture, where I, I sense we, we see it in a type of the rapture, in a perhaps an explicit scripture about the rapture, um, but also in one that talks about a horizontal rapture for Philip, right? When he was ministering to the eunuch in Acts chapter eight. Uh, Holy Spirit moved him to go to him and to explain the scripture that he was reading. Okay, uh, Acts eight thirty five. Then Philip opened his mouth. So one thing I wanted to point out here is <clears throat> there's going to be two things here: opening our mouth and out of the water. So in this type of horizontal rapture, it begins with Philip opening his mouth. We need to open our mouth. You know, there's the saying that. Um, preach the gospel everywhere and when necessary use words and if you guys have been watching my channel I've mentioned that a few times I don't really like that saying because we must uh, use words and we must be explicit about the gospel about Jesus okay and that's exactly what Philip did here then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus 
right now yes we need to be tactful in our relationships with people but it needs to eventually go down that path and talk about Jesus Christ is necessary for salvation let's talk about it okay so so they did their thing the guy gained understanding that's when I got baptism baptized <clears throat> as I was reading scripture and I read this part I'm like I, there needs to be understanding first and then um, and then the choice to be baptized and that's what happened with the eunuch and once I realized that I called a friend I said I gotta be baptized and <laughs> shortly thereafter I was all right so it happened they both went into the water okay and then let's jump to verse 39 and when they were come up out of the water the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away rapture horizontal <clears throat> this spoke to me in my my ponderings earlier talking about we need to come out of the water and a lot of times in scripture the sea and water and waves is the masses like the nations uh, the world as it were um, you know like like not saved uh, people of the world so it made me think we need to we need to come out right and we we are born again we're sealed with the spirit but we also need to just more and more like release our grip on the world and our loves and cares of the world <clears throat> So, do you know what I mean? That kind of struck me just to, um, in, in terms of before our catching away, before Philip was caught away, he came out of the water. Could there be some language, some winking here from the Lord saying, continue to release your grasp on things of the world, the, the nations, the, the ways of the world, the pagan world, the Gentile world, uh, to come out of that. And we will, by our sanctification, our grasp lessens. Um, on things we love in this world. It has for me, I'm sure it has for you, where there may have been some things a few years ago where we're like, dang, I really, this is cool, and I'm, and I'm looking to the future for this. But now, as the world is so broken and ugly, I think we, we can all release more and be like, you know, I had certain dreams and desires and good things, but seeing the state of things, we kind of understand that, man, it's not going to be able to continue. <laughs> we would like it, but it's impossible. That's probably by... Uh, design and by grace from King Jesus <clears throat> okay and then for me the thing that came to me today as I was just 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 exercising it and thinking of the Lord and I was praying and uh, reading like I mentioned and listening to worship music so uh, Revelation 4 and I actually read that this morning too that's probably why it returned back to me we're gonna see something in the heavens before right so many of us ha have been uh, having the sense that you know we may get some kind of a uh, due notice before unsure of how much time but i definitely think we'll have we'll have some kind of notice because we're not going to be like those who it comes upon them like a thief so therefore the inverse is true that we're going to be ready and looking and able to see um like the virgins the the five wise five foolish uh the five who are watching and are ready and um you know they weren't surprised that they were looking and they saw it coming <laughs> Well, same thing here in uh, the very first verse of Revelation 4. John, and this was right after um, Jesus speaking to all the churches. Okay, so after this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And then we get into breaking the seals and the, uh, the judgments and the wrath of God. <clears throat> the 70th week of Daniel and the rest of Revelation is very Jewish it's all it's all the Lord is returning his focus back to Israel and the unbelieving world the inhabitants of the earth so here we're seeing that that and this just struck me and I've read this 120 uh, many times Revelation and he's saying after this I looked and behold a door was open in heaven and then that voice of the trumpet at the last trump we who remain will be caught up the rapture so this, many of us think, is also talking about that. So the fact that he looked and he saw a door, a portal, open in heaven speaks to me and tells me that the day of rapture, and again, I would love it if uh, we had even more notice than a day or perhaps the moment right before. Um, and as I continue to study and pray, perhaps we'll find something more in Scripture talking about that. But until then, currently... At least it sounds like at the moment of rapture, it's not going to be like we're doing something and then bam, we're gone. Like It would seem here that there's going to be something in heaven that caused John. I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. Who knows how much timetable 
right? Uh, that he, he noticed this and looked and saw. You know what I mean? Was it minutes? Was it uh, the morning? <clears throat> a day? Um, you know what I mean? I, I don't know the timetable on this, but he looked and he saw, and he saw the portal. He saw, uh, he saw heaven open. So it makes me think before our catching away, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, will there be some kind of commotion, something? Especially, again, if, there's, if it's a nuclear rapture, are we? is everybody getting alerts that, that bombs are coming? So, you know, some people will hide. Others, like me, I'm going to be outside, like, looking. Like, come on, let's go. So we're going to be looking, looking up in the skies for the nukes coming, the missiles, the intercontinental ballistic missiles, but also us who know Jesus. We're looking for Jesus for the Red Sea moment. All right, so after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet. Yeah, at the last trump, the, the, the voice of command from the archangel. Uh, the dead in Christ will be uh, raised, and then we who remain will be caught up. Rapture, harpazo, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee the things which, which must be here after. Ah, how cool. All right, so... Uh, let me know, guys. Pray the Spirit on this. Consider the Scripture, Revelation 4.1. And uh, let me know what you think. And guys, be encouraged. Two things, the restrainer and blood. I want to close with this. And please, quick, hit the thumbs up, guys, if you're being blessed by this. All right, so the restrainer and the blood. So things may be tough now. But when we consider that, the restrainer must be removed first, Holy Spirit in us, rapture, <clears throat> and then Antichrist revealed, and then um, <clears throat> wrath, the 70th week of Daniel, a time of Jacob's sorrow. So it may be tough, but we will never see that kind of stuff. We are still protected. Restrainer still holding back the worst of it. I'm talking worst of it. Like during the wrath, it's going to be these angels who are slaughtering. It's going to be such bloodshed and just freaky. It's tough now, but let's compare and contrast. Like, we'll never have to see that kind of terrifying stuff. Praise the Lord for that. And we also read from uh, Hebrews. I was reading some Hebrews earlier today. And, uh, you know, as it is tough to be encouraged that we have not suffered yet to the point of shedding our blood. Again, let's kind of do some mental <clears throat> considerations here, especially on Thanksgiving, what we're thankful for. And as we consider, you know, it's tough and I have challenges. But it's not to the point of shedding blood like Jesus did. And not just the suffering of the crucifixion, but bearing on his soul and spirit just, just all the sin. All the sin we've done yesterday and we may do today. Ugh! Jesus was feeling all that in a profound manner. Oh my gosh. So right, we no matter what we go through, even if we go through, let's say there was supposed to, or there's going to be physical persecution and uh, like a martyrdom coming for you. Like, even so, and you, you may be feeling physical pain, which I think the Lord would still give us grace through it, but we would never have that mental anguish of, like, sin, like Jesus did, right? <clears throat> Hebrews 12, 1, 4. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And we know he's interceding for us constantly. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart, right? When we think of what Jesus has been through, we can be encouraged. We're like, okay, this is tough. My life has challenges. I'm not giving up. Jesus suffered so much for me. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. Ah, that's such a great perspective, isn't it? So, you know, there's also a, a quote from Amos uh, 6 1 Woe to those who are at ease, right? So it's hard, but uh, it's a woe. It's a curse to those who are not struggling, not striving, not caring, not hugging the cactus not embracing what the Lord has for them, deadening their senses, maybe with alcohol, drugs, pleasure-seeking. Jesus refused the gall mixture uh, on the cross, right? He faced soberly the, the hardest thing 
when enemies came to arrest him, he didn't run like most criminals and, and sought after men would do. He said, rise up, let's go. My accusers are here. <clears throat> so it may be hard, but if it's woe to those who are at ease, it is bless, blessing to those who are um, striving and struggling, right? And we hear about this in uh, the Beatitudes, Sermon on the Mount, all the blessings. All right, that was on my spirit. So be encouraged and be looking up. Be aware of your surroundings. Be encouraged. We probably will get a little wink, a little heads up, at least day of rapture, moment of, <clears throat> at least. And how cool that the Father's not going to spring it on us, right? If you got a little child, you don't come behind him and spook him. That's that's kind of wretched. You know, you make your announcement. You know, he looks and you're like, buddy, I'm coming, right? So that's what I had for you. Guys, I pray this blessed you immensely. Thank you for watching my video. Happy Thanksgiving. Have the best day ever. And King Jesus willing, I will see you next time. God bless you.